So what we're going to do in this lesson is just kind of briefly review what is alternating current, what is AC, uh, kind of give you a little bit of a graphical outline as to what it, exactly it is. I think you'll probably learn a few things, even if you kind of know a little bit about AC already. Uh, and then what I really want you to, to know, though, as we go through this class here, is that the skills that we have learned up until this point, just think back to everything we've learned. We've learned about voltage, current, resistance. Learned about capacitors and inductors. We've learned about uh, the current voltage relationships, Ohm's law, node voltage, Thevenin and Norton. All of that stuff that we've done, it's all extremely crucial. Uh, and I'll give you a little bit of a preview. The reason why all that stuff's so important is because really for AC analysis, once I show you how to set everything up, all of those techniques that we have learned before are going to be directly applicable to all AC circuits. And I'll say that again because it's really important. All of those techniques we've learned before, Thevenin and Norton equivalent circuits, series and parallel arrangements, node voltage, all the stuff that we've done, the techniques of analysis, they're all applicable to alternating current circuits, but you have to know a little bit of theory behind alternating current um, and how to use what we're going to call phasers, which will be a little bit later. You have to know how to use all that stuff and be very comfortable with it. So I don't want to just bulldoze into it. I want to make sure you understand what AC is. I want to make sure you understand uh, a little bit later how we're going to handle these uh, these sources and all the capacitors and everything in, a, in alternating current so that whenever we do the problems using Thevenin or Norton or node voltage or mesh current or whatever, you'll be very comfortable with the new material, the AC part, and you all already should be pretty comfortable with the prior material. So if you haven't already done so, I strongly encourage, in fact I require you, to go back and learn everything that I've taught in circuit analysis up until this point. Uh, and the second thing that I want to request of you, I'm going to give you a good primer on, on trig functions here, but if you're rusty in sine and cosine, and what they look like, characteristics, you know, basic ideas that you learn in trigonometry, I strongly recommend that you go and review some trigonometry if you're rusty in that. I'm going to go through it with you, of course, like I always do, but I really want to make sure that when you come into this and I talk about sine and cosine, you at least kind of know what they look like. I'm going to draw it for you, but you know, you still, there's a lot of mathematical background that we get that's going to be useful in this class. So, we're going to throw around some big terms in this class. The first one we've already encountered, alternating current. We're also going to throw around uh, a term called sinusoid. All right. So those are kind of interchangeable. Basically, uh, if, you could, if I could boil it down for you, alternating current is exactly what it sounds like. You see, when you compare that to what we've done before, which was direct current, in direct current circuits, which we already covered, everything is, is basically constant. You have a battery uh, or some other fixed voltage source or current source, it doesn't change. And when you switch the circuit on, you might have some transient stuff, but once it all settles out, the currents and the voltages all across the components in a DC circuit, they never really change. It's like a battery operated toy or something. And so as long as the thing is supplying power, you can measure uh, all over the circuit the different currents and the voltages and everything is staying the same. Nothing is changing. But in alternating current, it's fundamentally different. All right. In alternating current, the current or the voltage, and I'll, I'll, we'll talk a little bit more about how to know later, but basically everything in the circuit is going to be constantly alternating or changing, changing directions. Literally, it's going to be actually changing directions. And you might say, well, why is there alternating current? Why do we use alternating current? There's a lot of history between DC and AC, and it turns out that AC is very, uh, is very efficient for transmitting over long distances. So that's why we have our whole power grid set up as alternating current. And when you go dig back into physics, you'll realize that uh, when you generate electricity, usually what you're doing is you have a generator which is just a coil of wire and some magnets, and you're rotating the coil of wire uh, around, the mag around the magnetic field, and that's generating an electric current. And you'll see when you cut apart a motor and see how they're actually constructed, the way they're built is they generate these alternating currents because of the rotation. You go half a circle, and then you'll come back the other half the circle, and you go half the circle, and the other half the circle. So that's why it leads to these cyclic recurring back and forth kinds of voltages that are generated, and that's why you know, we end up using alternating current so much. So almost everything that you uh, use at home that's bigger than battery operated device is going to deal with alternating current. Anything that you plug into a wall outlet is using alternating current. 
So think about your televisions, think about your refrigerators, think about your uh, you know, stereo systems. Anything that plugs into a wall is using alternating current. So when I say alternating current, I'm going to explain what that is in a minute on the board. Um, but I'm going to throw in um, another term here called a sinusoid. See, I've talked about sine functions, you know, just briefly. You should learn those in trig. I'll talk about cosine functions. When you talk about sinusoid as a, as a word, it just means that shape, you know, that shape of a sine or a cosine. In fact, if you remember back from trig, sine and cosine have the same shape. They have exactly the same shape. If you shift them over and line them up, they're the same thing. So the, I'll explain the differences here in a minute between sine and cosine as a review, but the shape is what we're talking about. So that up and down wave nature, that's called a sinusoid. So sometimes you'll hear me talk about sinusoidal functions or your book, you might hear about a, that sinusoid over there. That just means that nice shape. It turns out that sinusoids, sines and cosines, they're extremely important in all of engineering and science. Um, they pop up everywhere and sinusoids are very, very special and they're, they're so very common. We use them all the time because of that. So let's talk about some characteristics of sinusoids or AC, alternating current. Number one, it comes out of our wall. And what do I mean by that exactly? I want you to visualize this a little bit. So imagine a wall socket, right? So eh, let's just go over here. Let's go over here for now. Let's say we have a wall socket. Usually you have a plate like this and you have you know, one or two plugs there. So usually you have uh, two guys like that with one of this dots down there and you might have something that looks kind of like this. So this is a, a plug, right? Don't worry about the uh, prong down here. Just kind of forget about that for a minute. So I erase it even though you may have that in your wall. Focus on the two uh, flat ones up here. What's happening in your wall socket, okay? What I actually kind of want you to do while you're watching this video is find a wall socket in the room and look at it. Nothing's plugged into it. Find one that doesn't have anything plugged into it. Just kind of look at it and just listen to me while we talk. Before your very eyes, if you look at these holes here, if you had invisible vision, if you had some kind of vision that could visualize um, uh, voltage without a meter, if you could see it, then you would see the voltage between these two prongs alternating and switching direction. In other words, you know how we used to talk about the voltage source, right? We have to label it. So in one instance of time, um, this prong has a plus and a minus, right? That would be the voltage drop going from there to there, right? But then if you could watch it a, a, a short time later, it will flip around so that this one is negative and this one is positive. See how they've alternated. Right, so literally it's plus minus and then it's plus minus the other way, so they flipped around. So this would be like your voltage. And if you had some kind of a meter, you could, don't do this unless you know what you're doing, but you could measure the voltage in the wall and you would see that it literally switches direction. How fast does it switch directions? Well, in the United States, it's 50 her 60 hertz, right? That's 60 times per second. Now around the world, there are different frequencies of the switching going on, but in the United States, it's 60 hertz, 60 times per second. So it's very fast. I mean, think about 60 times of anything per second. That's bah, 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 bah. that's pretty fast. So the flipping around here is literally flipping around just really, really, really fast, 60 times every single second. Um, but that's what's going on. The reason that 60 hertz goes into the history of of, of the of the um, you know of the uh, transmission and, and generation system that we have here. Different frequencies around the world. They have their own standards. But the idea is it's flipping back and forth. Now, in a DC circuit, right? Remember our good old DC circuits that we, we used to talk about a lot? Simple ones like this. If this is a DC source, then we say that the current is basically always going one direction. It comes out of the positive terminal, back around, forms a circuit, comes back to the other side. Now, if it's an AC uh, guy, so you'll see this drawn different ways, but uh, you might see a little sine wave inside of there. You may not always say that, but um, a lot of books will, sh will show it like that. What this means is that the voltage across this guy, sometimes, as I've said before, it's plus minus, but 60 times a second it flips back where it's minus plus. And because it flips back and forth like that, that means sometimes the current is literally flowing through the circuit this way, but then other times, the circuit switches direction, or the current switches direction, and goes back through the source the other way. And then it flips back and goes the other way, and then it goes the other way, and then it goes the other way. So literally, the current 
in an alternating current circuit, that's why it says alternating current, right? The voltage is switching directions, and also in, in, in line with that, the current is switching directions. So again, look at that wall socket. You can visualize that wall socket. Uh, pretend that you've plugged a vacuum cleaner or something into it. In one instance of time, the current may be coming out of the plug into your load and, and back in to the other prong, but then just a short time later, you know, a few milliseconds later, everything's flipped around and then you've got the current coming out of the right hand prong going this way and then it flips around and it goes like this. So literally the current is coming out to in, out to in, out to in, out to in, and that's flipping back and forth 60 times per second in the United States, very slight different variations around the world. That is the basic idea of what the heck alternating current really is. It literally is changing 60 times per second, right? Ba -ba 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 -ba, back and forth, back and forth. The voltage is switching direction, and because of that, because of Ohm's law, the current is switching directions also at the same frequency, 60 times per second in this case. That is a very... Um, broad overview of what's going on. So if you could plot the voltage, plot the strength of the voltage, you would see that it's alternating 60 times per second, but you would see it alternating as a sine or a cosine. We call those sinusoids. And also you would see that the current is also alternating as a sinusoid, right? So the currents and the voltages in the circuits, they're all going to look like sinusoids. They're all going to look like some kind of cosine function that we can write down mathematically. So that's a general overview without any math. We haven't done anything really mathematical yet, but I wanted to give an introductory lesson to show you what we're doing, give you a little bit of motivation, explain to you what alternating current is before you do anything mathematical. What I'd like to do now is for you to follow me on to the next section where we'll put pencil to paper and we'll start to write down how you would look at these sinusoids, how you would write down the function for a voltage, for instance, um, you know, mathematically, and lots of different terms. We're going to be talking about frequency and phase angle and all of these things that sound complicated, but just remember and repeat after me, none of this stuff is hard. All right, none of it's hard. I can explain it to you so it's so clear that you'll be very, very comfortable with it, but you do need to have some fundamental understanding of trig. So I'm going to take you through that, but if you have no idea what a sinusoid is, please stop now and go get some uh, of my lessons on trigonometry so you're comfortable with that, uh, sines and cosines and angles and things like that, uh, and then meet me back here, and we'll pick it up in the next lesson with uh, alternating current circuit analysis. Learn anything at mathandscience.com.